Hello everyone, this is Grant Hulbert, and I apologize I couldn't be here in person, which makes it a lot harder to have a Q&A session at the end, but I'll try to anticipate some of your questions. My favorite destination is a bit of a twist on the idea. It's not a physical geographic location, but instead it's one that you already have access to. And that is your giant library of unused and underappreciated photos that weren't quite good enough to show your friends. What I'll be showing you is how to reinvigorate some of those old photos and maybe discover something you hadn't seen before. So tonight we'll be talking about several painterly software products, some of which run on Mac and PC and others that run exclusively on the iPad. So Topaz Simplify is a Photoshop filter that runs on both Mac and PC. As its name implies, it tries to simplify details the way an artist would reduce an image to its most important parts. Topaz Impression also runs as a Photoshop filter on both Mac and PC, and it attempts to mimic specific styles of impressionistic painters, such as Monet and Cezanne and Surat, as well as general painting styles like impasto or charcoal. And finally, Waterlog for iPad has become my favorite, absolute favorite watercolor effect. It was designed and influenced by an expert watercolor painter who infused the product with his very realistic style. And its paper textures and ink flow are the most realistic I've ever seen. In this demo of Topaz Simplify, I'll grab a photo that I'm actually fairly happy with already. There's nothing really wrong with it, other than it probably needs some color enhancement. But I'd rather turn it into a painting, so I can print it up large on canvas and hang it up at home. So let's open it in Topaz Simplify and see what we can do with it. Simplify reduces the complexity of the picture and makes the colors jump out. When you click, it shows the original image for comparison. And over here on the left, there's a whole bunch of variations you can play with, including black and white and the intensity of the painterly effect. As you hover over this left side here, you see different variations of the painterly effect. And here you can see the effects of simplification. Those buoys disappear entirely because they're too small of a detail. I know when I'm watching these presentations, I always wish there were more examples. So let's try another one. When I took this photo, in my mind, I saw something ethereal and atmospheric and was thinking about the center area where the fog is. I was trying to frame the photo with these trees too, but there's just too much junky detail. So let's see what Topaz Simplify can do with it. We'll pick one of my favorite settings here, Buzz Sim. Now notice how much more ethereal the image is now and how the distracting details have been simplified compared to the original. Whenever I have an image that has too much organic detail that doesn't really make the photo better, I try Topaz Simplify to smooth it out. Notice the tree line detail is removed and it's even added a darker vignette effect here down at the bottom. Now let's move on to another product. In this demo of Topaz Impression, I'm going to show you something that almost seems too good to be true. Let's use an icon size image from one of our own members on the North County Photography Society website. I'll zoom in on it so you can see just how little detail is there. So first, let's resize it to something larger. You can see here it's only 109 pixels across. So we'll make it a little bigger and then open it in Topaz Impression. Now because Topaz Impression redraws the entire image with the brand new high resolution brush strokes, it almost doesn't matter what resolution the original image was. Here as it's drawing, you can see how Cezanne might have interpreted this image. 
And if we switch to some more modern impressions, such as this liquid lines, you get some really, really beautiful designs. Remember, this came from a 109 pixel wide original image. Now, back over to the masters, we see how Renoir might have painted this. And when I click on the image, you can see the original fuzzy version that Photoshop resized. And finally, a little bit of Van Gogh. Now let's work on an image that has some pretty good light, but really does not have a very good subject. This is kind of a random grab shot at a wedding I was at, trying to get a candid pictures of the flower girl. So the subject, while she's lit pretty well, she's not really all that interesting and frankly seems kind of distracted, so it's not the best picture. Let's see what Topaz Impression can do with it. I'll switch to my presets here, and we'll wait for it to do its rendering. It actually looks pretty darn good as an impasto. Let's try this other impasto to see how it looks. Notice how the subject material is less important now. Now, here it's safe to say that not all filters work well with every image. This one is pretty wild looking, so I'm pretty sure I don't want to use that one. But this one here is really nice. And I love how it shows the light in the little girl's hair. And when we look at the original image, look how blown out the hair is. There's no detail at all. But because we're repainting brush strokes from scratch, we're actually adding in some detail there that didn't exist before. Now let's try our biggest challenge yet a completely random photo from my library. I closed my eyes and I picked one, which happens to be an old low resolution cell phone image of a pile of junk, which I took for insurance purposes to show a house I was demolishing. You can see here that it's only 640 by 480 pixels and obviously was never intended to look good. Let's see what impression can do with it. We'll open it up here and switch to my presets again. Now I've added Georgia O'Keeffe to my presets and we'll zoom in a bit here. Now that's not too bad considering the original image really looked like nothing at all. So uh, let's try another one. Let's see what uh, impasto looks like. Maybe not so interesting. This one, uh, the liquid lines, actually not doing too bad. And then this swirly one actually adds a whole lot of color and a fair amount of interest. And you can still recognize this van up here. So even though I may not put this up on my wall, um, I'm actually pretty impressed with, uh, with how nice it looks considering the original image that it came from. Now let's move over to the iPad. Waterlog only runs on the iPad, so you can't get it for Mac or PC or even for Android, sorry. I'll open a picture from my camera roll. And we'll pause here so that you can see the original image. It's got okay lighting, but it's no masterpiece and certainly it wouldn't make it onto my wall. When Waterlog opens the image, it simulates what an artist might do. It first pencils in the rough outlines and then simulates paper texture and wet paint flow as it fills in the colored sections. I'll zoom in here so you can see the texture and the paint seepage. Across the bottom, you have quite a few options. In this case, I'll choose to make the painting lighter and we can watch it repaint the image. I find it kind of mesmerizing to watch. 
Now, after this is done painting, we'll pick a different style called Color Bloom and see how that affects it. And as it's painting, uh, you can see it looks like the paint is much more vivid and more wet. So it seeps past the borders a bit more. I know we've been talking about a lot of different software here, so let's take a moment to talk about the differences between them so you can decide when to use each one. On this slide, I've made examples from the same photograph so that you can pair them side by side. Up here in the upper left corner is an example of Topaz Impression. Notice the very strong brush strokes and impressionistic painterly effect. That's what it's really best at, simulating an impressionistic era painting style, although you can choose from a lot of modern styles as well. Over here in the upper right corner is Topaz Simplify. You don't really see any obvious brush strokes here, and everything's a bit crisper than the other techniques. Its main job seems to be to simplify and remove extraneous details. And finally, down here in the lower right corner is Waterlog's watercolor effect. The only thing watercolor, what that Waterlog does is watercolor, uh, so you won't get any other kinds of effects out of it. And because it adds a simulation of watercolor paper texture, you may not even have to print on special watercolor paper. But it's probably best if you do, so that when people look at your artwork up close, they'll still see the effect. I'll try to think of some questions you might have. Naturally, you want to know how much these cost and where to get them. I'll show an example of the kind of photo that doesn't work well. And finally, uh, the question is, is it possible to produce professional quality high resolution files from an iPad? Now, Topaz Impression, when it's not on sale, is 100 bucks. And to me, that sounded like a lot of money at first, but I was able to rationalize it when I thought about spending about that much money each time I print on a large 30 by 40 inch canvas. So it's really not all that bad for a one-time expense. Plus, the huge number of different painters and effects makes you feel like you bought something valuable. Topaz Simplify is 40 bucks, which seems about right considering it doesn't have all the impressionistic era artists in it. But it's been well worth it anyway because I've made some friends very happy by taking their photo from their website, printing it up large, and gifting it to them. It's really fun because they recognize their own work, but it's different enough to look like an artist improved on it. And finally, at three bucks, Waterlog is a one-trick pony, but it's extremely good at what it does. Finding these products is simple. All Topaz products are available on www.topazlabs.com and Waterlog can be found on Apple's App Store directly from your iPad or by logging into iTunes from your Mac. Let's talk about cases where the software shouldn't be used because it doesn't make a very good looking image. I'm sure that after playing with these for a while you'll have your own opinions, but for myself I've found that watercolors don't work well with faces especially if your subject is far away. I think it's because you expect to see more accurate detail in someone's face, and when it gets smudged around, it looks like bad art. Here's another example where the face is small enough that the watercolor effect just doesn't do justice to my wife's lovely face. For impressionistic paintings, you may want to stay away from photos that have details you want to show off. For instance, the birds in the middle and upper left area of this painting are just smudges and get lost in the background or even look distracting. I think landscapes and close-up portraits hold up a lot better when they don't have fine detail. The close-up portraits of someone's face work well because there's enough detail there because the image is larger that um, you're actually able to to get some reasonable artwork out of it. But when they're small, they're just, there just isn't enough detail to, uh, to look like anything more than a smudge. And to answer the question, is the iPad good enough? Yes, I am using 10 megapixel images just fine. 
And on this next screen here, you can see a full crop showing that there's plenty of detail there. Well, thank you, everybody. I know that these presentations sometimes can run long, and so this one is only 15 minutes. So technically, you now have five minutes of your life back. That means someone else can speak for a little bit longer, or uh, everybody can go home a little bit sooner.